We had over 1,634 submissions this year, which is a record. We're programming about 135 films over 10 days. 85 countries submitted, and of, of those countries, we're actually programming 45. So it's really going to be an extraordinary run, an extraordinary film. So I hope you can carve out a lot of time this October to come to those films and really participate in the Heartland 2030. We're here at the Heartland Film Festival ceremony, and I have the privilege of being with Ned from Show Folks. You know, th th this has been a pleasure to make and a great film, but it's, uh, it's, it's not about me, it's about Monica Lewis, Connie Sawyer, Milton Goldstein, Ruthie Thompson, Tootie Weeberg, Martin Seidman, Larry Kellum, just uh, seven amazing people and characters and uh, who I got to share a, you know, a good part of a year with and, um, and share their story for everybody here and they are wonderful people and I just tried to share their spirit with everyone and I want to thank them, that's what I want to thank. And when you started this journey, did you think that you'd be here at the red carpet or a winner for so many different festivals and excitement? No, <laughs> not at all. No, I just, I just began making a, a film seeking a bit of wisdom, you know. That's, and I just thought there was some really inspiring individuals um, that I wanted to know more about and I wanted them to help inform my life. That was a very selfish. You know that you go there and volunteer and really these folks are volunteering for you. It's at the MPTF home in the Valley in California. Um, industry veterans who just have so much to offer. And uh, I'm just it's so privileged to have absorbed some of that wisdom, shared a little bit with everyone and uh, sure worked out, you know, it's good. Do you have any wisdom for any future filmmakers coming along that you would like to share? Um, I think just trust your gut and do things for the right reasons. And that's this project was very pure. Um, I entered it just as a passion project. It's been that all along. Uh, you know, and I think whatever project you go into, just, you know, trust yourself and choose things carefully and wisely and listen to yourself. And, you know, you know what's going to be good. You know what interests you, whether it be narrative, or documentary and, and go the distance and have the courage to follow it all the way and don't give up. That's about it. So how do you enjoy Heartland on this fine evening? Well, as the last intern standing, I think that Heartland did a fantastic job and I had a ton of fun. This was awesome. And are you excited about the events tonight and the future of Heartland? Oh goodness, yes. I hope that they as hire the last intern standing, she's very excited about So excited. The events. Yeah. As the last intern standing, just yeah, me. Last intern standing. <laughs> she is the last intern standing. Mm, uh, many years ago, when, when I was a student at the college, I read that this sentence was Samuel Beckett's favorite sentence. The sentence is this Do not despair, one of the two thieves was saved. Do not presume, one of the two thieves was damned. At the time, we had a big scandal about referees in Italy, about corruption in soccer. So I decided to write a, to write a short story about two thieves, and one of the thieves was a referee, and the other one was, was a thief in the countryside. He steals a lamb. So that's how the short story began, and it was called Two Thieves. And one thief was a referee. Then I shot a short film, the short film was very successful, we made a feature film, we're in the Heartland, we didn't win, that's life. <laughs> but you're having fun at Heartland, right? Yes, of course, Heartland is fantastic, and I'm sure the, fi the winning film uh, is fantastic too, so it's good, it's good. Have you enjoyed your stay here in Indianapolis with the Heartland Film Festival? Yes, I really like the, the people around us, the volunteers, all the, all the people working for us to make us feel good. It's just a very nice place, a very nice place, a very nice festival, but especially I would say very nice people. Thank you so much. You much. Can you do a special ref pose, a referee pose from your film? Okay, you're on camera. Yeah. We are friends on Facebook now. We are friends on Facebook. We follow us on Twitter, everywhere. I know. I loved Handy. Such a fun. Can you show everybody how you do the Handy move? 
That's the Andy move. Well, I gotta tell you, everybody here at Heartland loves the film. They're flocking to go see it, or they're handing to go see it. Um, what was your inspiration to make the actual film? Uh, the inspiration was that I won a short film competition at the Cannes Film Festival. And uh, from there, I decided to make a short film very similar to that story, but using a hand as a protagonist. What made you think about using a hand? Uh, because uh, um, it was very difficult to create a story about uh, a character that uh, could not talk or could not really express like an actor. I thought that uh, as a filmmaker, if I could tell a story with an impossible character, I could have told uh, many other stories, you know, because uh, it's the most difficult task. Every, I think that every filmmaker uh, can easily maybe direct a human, but no one ever tried to direct a hand, you know? <laughs> so, so I thought if I'm able to direct a hand, it's going to be ten times easier for me to make a horror or a drama or a comedy in my life. Do you have any inspiration for any filmmakers that are out there trying to make a film or go through the film festival uh, circuit? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, try to spend little money. I mean, I, I did the movie all by myself. I don't say to do this. I'm saying try to spend little money because it's very hard to find distribution. So try to make an artistic work, something that you like, but don't sell your, your soul and don't put too much money for two things. First of all, because uh, there are many people out there who are really dying from hunger so I don't think is I mean my, that's my point of view okay even, even if I have two million euros I don't think is it's good to spend all that kind of money in a movie while you know there are people dying and second of all because I think that if you are a great filmmaker you can do something great even with a small amount of money and don't do movies just because uh, you want to become famous but because you want to share a message because the first filmmakers uh, we're not doing movies because they want to be famous. They just want to tell a story. Then it happened that uh, came TV, it came theaters, and then they became famous. But they didn't start like that. And that's why the best stories are from a long time ago. Now it's all visual effects oriented. It comes like crap sometimes, you know? So, of course, if you have a great budget, try always to do the best you can with what you have. Don't push too much. Because there are people out there who are dying. I mean, that's, all, that's always what I think. Well, I, like I said, everybody's so excited. And congratulations. And what are your thoughts about being here at Heartland? Uh, I mean, it's a, great, it's a great festival. The people out there are amazing. Really amazing. And today at the screening, it, it was full of people. And everybody was doing the Q&A. Everybody was curious how I made a movie without... <laughs> Fundings, <laughs> so and uh, all by myself, and I explained all the time how I did it. And how, so, did, and how did you do that? Because I was wondering that too. Well, uh, how can I do it? <laughs> uh, it took a lot of determination, the will of telling a story no matter what, and I had to learn a lot of softwares to do it. But I know that there is a producer out there that is going to look for someone like me who can do 100 with one resource. <laughs> Thank you so much for the U.S. ask you a couple questions. Being an actress, did you have to learn a lot of different stunts uh, to be in the film? Uh, was it anything difficult for you to do? えっと、アクションの方は中国武術をずっとしてきていたんですけど、あの、日本の刀を持ったのは初めてだったので、みんなあ、practicing、あ、martial where uh, in Chinese martial arts you should never do that. So we are looking for young and talented, beautiful, and who can also do um, uh, acting and action. And it's it's really like hard to uh, find someone like that. And we have been looking for like you know 
almost like everyone in Japan, and uh, and we were lucky to uh, uh, have her. And she's really the um, luckiest thing that happened to the movie. Was there something about the Heartland Film Festival that brought you back here that you thought you needed to be here? Well, thank you. Uh, well. Um, three years ago, I came here uh, with a short film called Frog in a Well, and uh, the experience here was literally uh, like one of the best film festival experience uh, that I have in my life. Uh, from the airport till when I go back to the airport, everything was like, fantastic. Uh, people at the film festival, the filmmakers that we've met, and the films that I have seen were just like top notch. And uh, uh, I think uh, it was like one of the you know, best uh, experience that I've had, just not include, e including everything, you know, like uh, uh, that I just had an amazing time, so I really wanted to come back here with my feature film. Did you keep any of the props, like the big swords, or did you did you yourself try to do anything with the with the swords just to see what it was like? She started practicing uh, for this movie. Seizo Fukumoto and the team of uh, film extras at the studio gave her like real wooden sword to practice, and she treasures it, and she kept, uh, and she will keep it for the rest of her life. What would be your inspiration for any future young film stu students or anybody that is interested in making a film that you that that you would like to give advice for? Well. I, I got denied to make movies from like the producers, but you know you you can get like hundred thousand denies, but you only need one yes, and until you get that yes, you just have to keep making movies and they keep trying. Were there any shots that were hard to film? Uh, I think the last shot of the movie was the hardest to uh, do because. Uh, um, we have been shooting uh, Seizo Fukumoto for like 15, 16 days and it was one of the last days of shooting and uh, he has been falling down for like you know 100 times during the shoot and we were very careful and the last shot uh, of the movie was uh, a shot very late night and he had to do it over and over again and, uh, and he never complained but when we had the uh, camera up there and we did the last you know uh, falling down and we were Cla everyone was clapping and we had a very nice moment. I think the biggest inspiration is Seizo Fukumoto because um, in 55, 55 years of uh, his career uh, as a kirare yaku, which is a film extra, specialized to be killed in samurai movies. And he got killed 50,000 times. It's, it's an incredible number and he still continues to uh, 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 polish his craft. And, uh, you know, being killed 50,000 times means he stood up 50,000 times. He got back up and uh, again and again. And that's really true inspiration for the film. Thank you so much, both of you. We really appreciate you both being here. You came all the way from Japan. Thank you so much. We love you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what was the inspiration of the title of your film? Ooh, um, the inspiration is that uh, one of the Sanskrit meanings for the word Siddharth, the name Siddharth is a uh, search for absolute truth, and uh, from the from the Buddhist, um, kind of, you know, religion and culture, and um, so that's the name of the child in the film, and the father is essentially searching for his missing son named Siddharth, so that's why I named the film that way. And if I'm correct, you actually had the inspiration for the story from actually being in India riding in a... In a rickshaw, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a rickshaw driver I met who lost his, his boy and ask, was asking me for help to find him. And uh, the nature of his, of his uh, the issues, the impediments in his search were so... Uh, they were insignificant to me. They were, they were economically related. He didn't have a photograph. He didn't know how to spell his son's name. Issues like that, which, you know, nobody in this environment would have. So that kind of inspired the, the, what the journey of this film end, ended up becoming. There's so many issues in this film that are just thrown in there, sometimes in the background, sometimes in periphery as you walk by, as characters walk by, and you see things, and if you really see, wait, 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 what was that? What was that in the corner of the frame? Or what is that environment he's in? If you really pick that apart, it can be something quite complex um, and, and um, you know, very, uh, in, in some, time, some cases, devastating if you really think about what, what's being represented. Um, I, you hope that it inspires people to think about the world in a different way. Um, at least question what you're seeing. 
and I definitely I'll be affiliate. I have started affiliating with organizations. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I would hope that we would be able to get out to some of these places and, and show the film and inspire other people, maybe for positive change. Uh, you know, it, that's kind of what you... I, I'm not the type of person that can do this. All I can kind of do is communicate. And in this case, communicate what I felt uh, out of a real encounter with somebody and hope other people can run with that. I don't think you can spread a truly moving message or make a truly moving picture if you haven't lived if you haven't gone out into the world and seen uh, all the films that are sh uh, that are, have been shown today and and the colleagues that I've met, um, they're drawing from a life experience which is so far away from my own. And I think that's where the meaning comes from, right? We're able to empathize and sympathize with people and characters in, in places and in circumstances that we couldn't have possibly done on our own. And so the filmmakers themselves need to be in those environments to be able to talk about that. So I don't think if you sit in your room or in your office and try and say, I want to mimic this film or I want to do this genre, you're going to get there. It has to be an excellence in craft and it has to be a combination of life experience. doesn't mean you have to be old. I mean, some of the high school films were, were amazing. But you have to live and experience. So get out there and, and differentiate between the what you're trying to do and the how you're trying to do it. Thank you so very much and congratulations. I love this guy. <laughs> We, we love Wonder Woman Productions. Hey, me and Andy, we love Wonder Woman Production. So you better subscribe to that channel. You better follow us on Facebook. You better follow us on Twitter. Otherwise, it's going to be very nasty. And you don't want me getting angry. So you better follow us on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. <laughs> so. We love Wonder Woman Productions. Woo!